In today's fashion world, we all have the privilege of self-expression through our personal styling and our outfits, which is amazing because if you wind back the clocks even a hundred years ago, you'd be hard pressed to find one tenth of the level of self-expression that you see today. And one of the most interesting aspects about personal styling today is how individuals integrate accessories into their own outfits. There are three aspects that I want to explore in today's video as it relates to accessories. We're talking about eyewear, jewelry, and wearables. And to break down wearables further, more specifically, we're talking about headwear, belts, bags, and the wild card one, headphones. And now it's important to say that all the information I give out in this video is merely my opinion. And if you have a conflicting perspective, make sure to leave it down in the comments Let's have a conversation about it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What Do, and I wanna give a big thank you to Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video. When it comes to good looking, high quality eyewear, Warby Parker has everything you need for happier eyes. From their selection of prescription eyeglasses to sunglasses to their easy to do at home exams, I'm incredibly excited to show you guys some of the frames that I've selected that are available at Warby Parker. So these are the five frames that I selected through Warby Parker's at home try on program, which is absolutely free. Help me decide which one you think suits me the best. Here's number one. I love the color and the quality of these ones. Here's number two. I think that these have a beautiful shape to them. Here's three, one of my personal favorites. I was really excited to see these in person. Here's four, just absolutely beautiful frames. And last but not least, here's five. Man, it's gonna be tough to choose just one of these frames. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments which one you prefer the most. And when you do the try on program for yourself, there's no obligation of purchase. It's essentially a free try on program. It's in the name. <laughs> and as a point of reference, glasses start at $95 for your prescription if you do decide to purchase one of the frames from your free try on program. Visit warbyparker.com slash rejoiner to support the channel and to try some new frames for yourself. Now let's begin this conversation about the fundamentals of accessories, starting off with eyewear. I think eyewear is such an interesting and important aspect of elevating an outfit with accessories. There are so many interesting looks that you can go for as it pertains to eyewear. From more classy and classic looking forms of eyewear and sunglasses to the very unique unique and reprogramming type of eyewear that makes you kind of turn your head and gasp at it. And everything in between, wherever you fall in terms of your personal preference for eyewear, I think you can't go wrong. Eyewear elevates an outfit more times than it doesn't. I personally lean towards the more sophisticated, more clean and simplistic types of eyewear as they aren't as magnetic as some of the more bold and eye-catching forms of sunglasses that are also very commonly available in today's fashion scape. Eyewear with metal frames, sleek silhouettes, and nice quality allow you to move from being with your friends to more serious situations without having too much trouble. It's hard for me to pinpoint a particular frame of choice, but I feel like you kind of get my gist with these reference images. Now, you may be interested in other types of eyewear for personal styling, which is fantastic. I'm not here to jam down your throat this idea that there's only one way, it's only one type of eyewear you should buy. That's not what this channel is about. Like I said before, when it comes to eyewear, there's really no wrong way to go about it. Whether it be juxtaposing something really, really unique, like a very sporty look with something more sophisticated, or wearing these really androgynous, really outlandish, bold eyewear sunglasses or frames, it's all about the fun of experimentation, which is why I love being able to live in the era that we get to live in right now. Fundamental number one, elevate or introduce eyewear into your wardrobe and your peers as well as your outfits will find it quite proper. Can I say that like that? That was kind of weird. Either way, find you some good frames and find you some good sunglasses. Eyewear 101. <laughs> Moving right along, let's dive into jewelry. Women's wear has openly adopted jewelry for years and years and years. In 2022, men's wear is in the best place it's ever been in terms of its acceptance of wearing jewelry. And I think in recent years, there's been this pull to more maximalistic types and forms of jewelry styling. And what I mean by maximalism is the complete opposite of minimalism, <laughs> meaning more people are wearing multiple chains, multiple bracelets, have multiple earrings. There's just a lot going on in terms of how they're wearing and styling their jewelry. 
This isn't true for everyone, of course. There are obviously always going to be people who keep things relatively simple, and I feel like I lean somewhere more towards that spectrum, but I do think maximalism in styling jewelry as an accessory is really, really cool when it's done in the proper way. And once again, it's up to you to determine how you want to integrate jewelry into your stylistic motif. And unlike eyewear, when it comes to jewelry, it seems to be a much more subtle aspect of a fit, but does the same effect as eyewear eyewear and pulling all the elements of the fit together to create this really cohesive look. Whether it be including a single ring that you find at the thrift store or including chains that you buy from one of your favorite high-end brands. Jewelry can be so fun and I'm discovering that for myself. Finding your lane or creating your lane is one of the best things that someone can do for themselves as it pertains to accessorizing with jewelry. Also, when it comes to personal styling, never feel obligated to wear a particular item or particular items a certain way because of their relative trendiness during the current meta. There are so many options when it comes to jewelry, from beaded necklaces to gold to silver to wood to really crazy big items of jewelry to really small, dainty, flimsy items of jewelry. Once you kind of dip your toe into the world, get a feel for what you like and hone in on that. For me, I tend to lean towards jewelry that's a bit more youthful, has a bit of edginess to it, but also combines the simplicity element as well, or things that have real personal meaning to me. If it has a personal meaning to me, if a friend made it, or if it's a hand-me-down, or if it's something that I found on a trip and that trip means a lot to me. That type of jewelry is a really good story point for your outfit and it makes you a little bit more of an interesting person versus just buying what is trendy or what is hot right now. And if you don't know where to start, go to the multi-brand retailer of your choice. It could be My Teresa, it could be Farfetch, it could be Essence, and go to the sales section because I know that you know we in a recession right now. So go to the sales section and look at what options are available. That's a great way to sift through a ton of different product offerings. Maybe find a design nature that you like and then maybe go to Etsy or something else and find it somewhere else. Secondhand is a great place to go. There's so many options when it comes to buying jewelry and the point of this video, the point of fundamental number two, which is jewelry, is to say, hey, there's a lot out there, you should explore it. One last thought, if you know of someone who's a small creator who makes jewelry, leave them down in the comments, especially if they do a really good job. I love to see small brands being mentioned down in the comments it enriches you know my life as a creator as someone who loves fashion and everyone else who's a part of this community so leave that down in the comments if you have it lastly let's talk about wearables which i don't know if that's the proper word to use but that's what i'm going with but i guess you typically wear everything but i guess i don't care but 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 let's talk about it <laughs> so when i say wearables i want to talk about four specific categories headwear, bags, belts, and the wild card, which is headphones. When talking about headwear, it's another very magnetic aspect of an outfit. Anything that draws attention to your face typically gets seen before what's on your legs or on your feet, so that's why I'm using the term magnetic. One of the things that I love about headwear is all the options that are available to you. If you're more into avant-garde looks, you can play with incredibly exaggerated and over-the-top headwear. If you're more into streetwear, you can play with the full range and color gamut of fitted hats. And if you're into a more elevated bohemian Bodhi-esque outfit, then there are hats and headwear items that correlate with that style as well. My experience, I like to dabble in streetwear, not necessarily in fitted hats, but I love, love, love trucker hats. It's kind of like iconic for what I typically wear on a day to day. But the fact that I'm not wearing a hat right now, some of you guys are like, yo, like what's going on, Drew? Like, why aren't you wearing a hat? Like, bro, I got a haircut. Like I'm feeling myself right now. Trucker hats are great. I love them in the summertime and they fulfill a really great need by keeping my head cool and kind of blocking the sun out of my face when it's really warm outside. In the winter, I'm more of a beanie guy. And soon enough, I will be making a video talking about my full collection of headwear because I do have a lot of hats over there that I want to talk to you guys about. Moving along to bags. Bags for a lot of people are more function than they are fashion, but that doesn't mean they can't be a perfect blend of the two. In 2020, the tote bag seemed to be the bag of the year with countless variations of quality and stylistic preference. And in women's wear, accessorizing with a bag is nothing new. But in men's wear, there seems to be a small sect of men that seem to be relatively reluctant to having wear 
wearable bags as a part of their daily look. Whether it be over the shoulder bags, like a tote bag, cross body bags, like the Suno bag, or backpacks, all of these bags elevate an outfit and bring it together while adding a bit of functionality to your daily life. I mean, I was hoping I didn't have to say this, but your pockets can't carry everything, bro. But in my opinion, I think that if you are going to use a bag as a part of a fashion accessory and put nothing in it, it becomes a bit inauthentic to what the bag is created for. Bags, while they can be used as accessories, are also meant to be used as functional items, especially if you're using a bigger bag. If you're using something smaller that's obviously for fashion and not really for the functionality, then I think you can get away with not putting anything in it. But I think if you have like a large bag or backpack and it's just fashion and all you have in there is your phone and it kind of looks a little bit weird when you are wearing it for your fit pics or whatever, then I think it's a bit inauthentic. But at the end of the day, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to give advice, have conversations. So do what you think is best. Really quick, I wanna to touch on belts for a second because the belts are not often talked about. I think belts like bags are more intertwined with this idea of functionality than fashionability. And to be honest, I only have one belt in my closet and it's this black reversible belt that goes from a black belt to a brown belt and it's something i've had for maybe 10 years literally since i was literally you know 14 years old and that's just my truth man it might be a bit jarring for you to hear that but for even myself this fashion journey is a journey and as i continue to develop my taste i'm also learning a ton of new things all the time myself so my suggestion for myself and for you when it comes to belt is Experiment with different types of class, different types of width for the belt, the quality of the belt, obviously. And the more I learn about belts and personal styling for myself, the more I'll share what I think is right for you on this channel. All right, the very last thing I wanna talk about in this video as it pertains to fashion accessories in 2022 more specifically are headphones. As weird as it is, I think headphones are one of the more defining features of 2022 in terms of accessories for fashion yeah i said that right <laughs> now obviously headphones are designed specifically to improve the listening quality of your listening experience and that's something that i think we all can agree upon but i think that we also know that there are some headphones that are more designated as style and coolness than they are high quality headphone and audio technology and the headphones that are the prime catalyst for this movement in 2022 are the airpod maxes which if you don't know are 500 dollars headphones by apple if you spend some time on the fashion side of social media whether that be tiktok or instagram i can guarantee that one of your favorite influencers or content creators has showcased probably a snippet or a video or a picture or something Something of the sort with these headphones on if they haven't then you know maybe you're on a different side of social media than i am but in my experience i've seen it relatively often not all the time but relatively often so for me i want to make two comments as it relates to these quote unquote fashion accessories First, I think the mentality to buy these headphones as fashion statements really opens the door for a lot of really interesting wearable technology to be seen as fashion statements. I think that the more we expand the possibilities for wearable items as fashionable details only will continue to evolve what we know as fashion in the future. Hopefully that makes sense. And second, I think the mentality to buy headphones as fashion accessories is a really interesting one, especially at the price point of $500. Do you think in the future that more technology companies will bend their products to be more fashionable to sell more? Or do you think that this is kind of a one-off fad with the Apple AirPod Maxes? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And thank you again to Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2022. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Abianto. Peace. Yo, what is good, PVV? This video took way too long to film. I was messing up way too much. It took me like an hour to film this video. It shouldn't have taken that long. Either way, here's two fist bumps for the one time. Bop! Here's another one. I appreciate you guys so much for being that 1%. Bop! One question for the PVV. What is your go-to accessory? What accessory do you just 
reach for with every outfit, whether it be jewelry, a hat, whatever. For me, it's got to be headwear. Nine times out of ten, I'm usually wearing a hat, and I'm not right now because I just got a haircut, but nine times out of ten, I'm wearing a hat. So anyways, PVV, got love for y'all, man. Like the video, share with your friends. I know y'all support very, very heavily, and I appreciate it so dearly. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.